Key value stores are one of the most fundamental parts of databases. The concept itself is super simple. You can read and persist data using a given key. In other words, it is a big hash map. However, there are thousands of ways that a key value store could be implemented. And in this video, we'll talk about how Couchbase did it and how it plays a significant role in performance. Let's get started. The first challenge while building a distributed database is to decide how to distribute the data between nodes, right? Those subdivisions or subsets of data are called shards. In many distributed databases, you have to specify a sharding key, which is usually one of the attributes of your document. But here is where it becomes a little bit tricky. Say you need to store users and orders, and you pick country as the sharding key. Over time, there's a good chance that the China and the India shards will be much larger than the Luxembourg and Liechtenstein ones. As a shard cannot be subdivided, the server holding the China and the India shards will be overloaded, while the one holding Luxembourg and Liechtenstein will most likely be sitting there doing nothing. You can of course reshard your data, but resharding is an expensive operation that will take a while to run and force databases to stop accepting any requests. But there is still another challenge here. How do you know where in the cluster the data is located when you need to get it back? One of the standard solutions is to create some sort of hierarchy between servers, where there is a master node responsible for maintaining the map of shards. This is what we call a master-slave architecture. This approach makes the database implementation a lot easier, but introduces a few other problems like requests have to go to the master and then to the slave, which will impact your query performance negatively. The master node will naturally become the bottleneck and also limits the scalability of your cluster. When the master goes down, the database becomes unavailable until a slave gets promoted to master. Now let's talk about Couchbase's approach, which is significantly different. First, Couchbase has a fixed number of shards, 1024, which in theory limits the maximum number of nodes that a single cluster could have to 1024. But in practice, it's hard to see one single database with more than 100 nodes in it. This default number of shards also prevents them from growing larger than what a single node could handle. Worth highlighting that these shards are transparent for developers. From their point of view, they see just one big database. Here comes one trick. Whenever a new document is added, Couchbase hashes the document key using an algorithm called CRC32. According to the output of this hashing, it will assign a shard to that document. Internally, we call those shards vBuckets, and you can see reference to them in the web console. This strategy evenly distributes documents among vBuckets, which eliminates the need of resharding them in the future. And here is the cool part. When the SDK first connects to the cluster, it downloads the cluster map, which is just a list of nodes and the respective shards that each node is responsible for. With that, the SDK can quickly determine which node has the target document by simply hashing the key to find the shard and then find in the cluster map the node that contains it, which allows the SDK to always talk directly to the right node. This architecture called master-master or masterless can give you better performance than relational databases, even though we are in a distributed environment. In Couchbase, for instance, you can make key value operations on the sub-millisecond level. Because there is no master, even during a node failure, the SDK can still communicate freely with the healthy nodes, making the whole system much more robust and reliable. Thanks a lot for watching and see you in the next video.